My name is uh, Fred Witjes. I'm a professor in oncological urology in the Radboud University Center in Nijmegen. Um, we are, uh, amongst others, specialized in bladder cancer care. Um, as you might know, I'm chairman of the European Bladder Cancer Guideline. So we see a lot of patients with bladder cancer. Um, we do around 100 cystectomies a year, uh, more than 1,000 cystoscopies on the outpatients, and a few hundred TOR resections every year. The follow-up of patients with non muscle invasive bladder cancer, as is described in the guideline, is done with cystoscopy and cytology. Cytology predominantly to exclude high-grade tumors. And uh, the problem is a little bit that, for example, the follow-up frequency is basically not well defined. If you look at different guidelines, the European guideline, the American guideline, the British guideline, the advices in follow-up frequency are hugely different. For example, in the United States, uh, it is around five years. In England, it's only one year. And after that, it's not cost-effective anymore. So we need better tools in follow-up. Okay, so well, the limitations of cytology are very obvious. It's a subjective um, um, judgment of only cells. If you have a tumor which is resected, you see the cells in their context, you see tissue. Uh, so I understand that cytology for a cytologist is difficult to interpret. Um, and even after the newest classification, the, the parasystem TPS, uh, which has improved uh, the value of cytology a little bit, it still is a difficult, um, uh, uh, it's a difficult uh, result. Um, to be honest, I indeed only used it to exclude a high-grade tumor, and even then, if you have an atypical result um, or a doubtful result, it doesn't really help me a lot, and then you are basically bound to do or a cystoscopy or do biopsies. So if you would have a urinary marker that uh, reflects better the situation of the bladder and for a marker probably also for the upper urinary tract, that would be very helpful. So we just talked about the limitations of cytology. Um, to be honest, there are also limitations of cystoscopy. I did a uh, study in the 90s talking to patients about the urinary test. And then I said to the patients, well, you know, the alternative is cystoscopy where we see 100% of tumors. Now we use blue light, Hexfix. We know that with white light on the outpatients, we miss 20 to 30% of tumors. So what we thought was perfect definitely is not perfect. That's not a golden standard. Maybe it's a silver standard, but definitely not a golden standard. Um, so also cystoscopy has certain limitations, which we can overcome by combining that with a good urinary marker. So to be honest, I've been looking for urinary markers already for two or three decades. My initial research was also directed to markers in the 90s and the first decade of the century. So far, we never found a marker that uh, was satisfactory enough for me as a urologist or for my patients. Um, in the last few years, several new markers have come up with better techniques like the, the APCheck test, uh, which looks at methylation, which is very important in tumor development, um, which gives much better results and, uh, in this case, a, a very high negative predictive value, which means that if in follow-up those tests are negative, that the chance that the patient still has tumor is less than 1%, which makes me and also the patient uh, very confident that we don't have to do cystoscopy anymore, which uh, uh, significantly reduces the cystoscopy frequency, so the workload for the urologist and obviously also um, the, the quality of life for the patient because they don't have to come to the hospital as often, they don't have to have an invasive procedure as often. So for, for everybody, this basically is a win-win situation. So what I've done in my practice, uh, being confident after two studies, so the initial study and the extension study with APCheck, that the test really is uh, robust and it's, it's an easy to perform test. So having seen the results, uh, what I now discuss with my patients, and a lot uh, are confident with that, so what I discuss with my patients is that I uh, do a cystoscopy one time and the next time I will do the APCheck test. And the time after that again is cystoscopy, so I'm alternating cystoscopy with the urinary test.